Hello, and welcome to We Speak CBE, a free podcast from the CBE program. On this podcast, we'll talk with people from the cybersecurity community about what else? Cybersecurity and vulnerability management and the CBE catalog of vulnerabilities. If you didn't know, the CBE program's mission is to identify, define, and catalog publicly disclosed cybersecurity vulnerabilities. Hello and welcome to the CBE podcast. My name is Shannon Sabins, your host. I'm a CBE board member uh, and I'm also a director of threat response at CrowdStrike. With me today is Julia Turkovich uh, from CISA and I'd like to let Julia introduce herself. Hi, Julia. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for introducing me. Uh, I work in the cybersecurity division at CISA, specifically in vulnerability management. Uh, Part of my responsibilities are recruiting new CNAs to the CBE program, uh, which CISA sponsors and co-operates alongside um, MITRE. Julia, tell me a little bit more about CISA. Some folks may be very familiar with CISA and the incredible support that they offer and provide, and some of our audience may be less familiar with CISA. Would you tell us a little bit about CISA and the mission in in general and uh, and then about uh, vulnerabilities and CBE specifically? Sure thing. So CISA is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. We fall under the Department of Homeland Security here in the US. And um, like in its name, CISA is responsible for cybersecurity across the um, federal enterprise and the national ecosystem, as well as infrastructure security uh, across those things. But in the world of cybersecurity and operational technology, we know that those things extend beyond just the US. Um, And that's where vulnerability disclosure comes in. Uh, Companies from all over the world have products that we use here in the U.S. and vice versa. And um, some of those products are OT, some are IT. It's all mixed in together. So one of CISA's roles is to facilitate coordinated vulnerability disclosure across the global cyber ecosystem. Specifically, CISA has a special interest and scope in the CVE program in industrial control systems medical devices, and um, the automotive industry. And so um, looking at the CVE program, we federated out some time ago uh, where MITRE was the top level route, and then there were additional routes with specific scopes. And and you mentioned industrial controls, and you mentioned automotive. but maybe we should tell the people a little bit about, you know, what are the roots and, and who are the roots uh, and, and what does it mean um, for, you know, for CISA to have this role and scope as a, as a route uh, for industrial controls and automotive, et cetera? Of course. So um, MITRE was the first CNA and started assigning CVEs to vulnerabilities by hand. Um, And as the program grew, uh, we needed capacity to match. And so one way to fill that gap was to uh, create a hierarchy. So MITRE is a root and so is CISA. That means we are responsible for the recruitment and governance of CNAs that fall under our root scope. The other routes that are in the CVE program are uh, Google, Red Hat, and Incibe, so the Spanish CERT, and JP CERT, uh, the Japanese CERT. And so all of us are roots that are responsible for recruiting CNAs who align with our specific scopes to join the CVE program. For CISA, that means we are interested in recruiting companies in the industrial control systems, medical devices, automotive industries uh, for our coordinated vulnerability disclosure. The other piece I want to mention about being a root is uh, we are also a CNA of last resort and a top level root. Both CISA and MITRE have additional responsibilities unlike the other four routes I mentioned. 
So as a top level route, we are responsible for um, co-operating the program and we report directly to the CDE board. And we're also a CNA of last resort which means should there be any disputes amongst the CNAs about a vulnerability, if it should be assigned, if it falls within a different CNA's go scope, things like that, uh, we are the route that is responsible for coordinating and resolving that issue. That's a really good point. I think a lot of people don't necessarily know that the CDE program has a process by which, you know, we can help people resolve C, uh, CDE disputes. Uh, what one person thinks is a vulnerability uh, is CDEable, um, and somebody else, you know, feels differently. There is a disputes process, uh, and the top level routes can help us resolve those. So I'm glad you brought that. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I notice you. Um, you mentioned several times recruiting, which I, I think is is fantastic and helping us grow um, as a program and as an international program. How many um, how many uh, CNAs do you have under your scope presently, and in how many countries? So, um, in May, we were proud to announce two industrial control systems CNAs who uh, put us up to 31 CNAs under the CISA ICS route in 11 different countries. Um, so that is a great milestone that I'm glad you asked about, uh, Shannon. And yeah. then, uh, you know- oh, countries is impressive. I, I love that. But yeah, well, and um, what's also interesting to note is so all across the CVE program from all the different routes, um, CISA, MITRE, and CBA, JP Cert, Google, and Red Hat. Together, we have over 290 partners in 36 countries. And the other sort of stat I want to throw out there is it's not just governments, it's not just software companies. You can be a researcher, a vendor, open source company, a bug bounty provider, or even a hosted service. Those are all partners in the CVE program. There's different hats you can wear to be a part of the CVE program. That's a really good point. Um, you know, I think uh, people do necessarily think of vendors, uh, but increasingly, you know, we see participation from uh, the research community and in particular, uh, the bug bounties and bug bounty service providers. Um, yeah, for sure. And it, 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 frankly, from my own background, um, when I coordinated vulnerability uh, research for the Zero Day Initiative, I had really wonderful experiences um, working with CISA and, and what was U USICS CERT at the time, um, reaching out to international industrial controls vendors and um, just tremendous support there, great people to work with. And I was very, very impressed. Um, well, and thank you, Shannon. We're just uh, ever growing our international presence and partnerships. Um, it is a community driven program. Uh, CISA is, this isn't a US government program. The US government participates and sponsors this program. But uh, one of my favorite aspects is that we do partner and keyword partner with vendors, bug bounty providers, researchers, open source orgs from all over the world. Yeah, I, I, I found that to be true and I, I was very impressed with that. I also, you know, coming back to, you mentioned several times recruitment, but I've at, which I mean is a, is a huge part of, of building and growing the program, of course, but I, I felt like, um, you undersell the incredible support that the program offers, and I and and I'm sure that you know that um, that you offer the CNAs under your top level route. Um, and only one of the things you do um, is resolving disputes, but also um, you know I've just been so many so impressed with so many of the other things that you that you do. So you know not just recruitment. I think if if um, 
if a vendor or a research entity, what have you, uh, came under the CISA route, uh, under the CISA top level route, I think, um, you know, they would find tremendous uh, support there for all the things that they need to do as a CNA. That said, um, I think a lot of organizations uh, can be intimidated by becoming a CNA and, and they worry about, you know, who can become a CNA and what's really required and, and um, you know, um, they imagine obstacles to becoming part of the CBE program and becoming a CNA. But I think it's really easier than, um, than people imagine, you know, and it is, it's not an elite program, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a community and, and there are, there are uh, rules, if you will, um, and commitments, but, but I think the bar is really, um, is really quite, a, you know, quite a modest uh, bar. Um, so tell us about what's really required and, and, you know, who can become a CNA. Absolutely. And, you know, we want to make the CVE program accessible to as uh, many participants as who are interested. I think what many people know is that if you have a um, vulnerability response or vulnerability management department at your organization, you use the CVE program. And sort of the next step as an organization or as a researcher would be to start participating in the CVE program and actively disclosing vulnerabilities. Um, so with that, to become a CVE or a CNA, a CVE numbering authority, uh, you have to have a public disclosure policy, and you also have to have a public advisories page. Uh, what we typically find is um, mature organizations who, as I said, already participate in some sort of vulnerability management activities, they just need to document it on their public facing website. Um, it's really that simple. Other organizations who maybe are ready to take their company to the next step um, usually need to talk to their leadership and see do we have capacity to start disclosing vulnerabilities publicly? Do we have enough staff to help with assigning CVE IDs? Um, is our you know, organization to ready to take our um, you know, global cybersecurity presence and policy to the next level? And so those are the two types of organizations that come to us, ones who already have that in place or who are ready to take the next step. Um, and a lot of times organizations already have a public advisories page, but they may view it as a customer only advisories page. For instance, if you are a medical device company and if you issue alerts to your customers um, to update their certain uh, devices, that's already a public advisory. It's just for your customers only. So to become a CNA, you would have to open that up to the public. Now, you do have to make sure there is no fee or cost for someone to uh, get access to that vulnerability knowledge. The purpose of the CVE program is for public and global benefit, which is why there's no fee to participate, but also there is, um, you know, there is should be no barrier for anyone in the world to view an advisory. I, I love that. And I have to say, I found from my own experience, something that you said is very true, which is a lot of organizations that wonder if they're ready to become a CNA and that, that approach the program are already doing a lot of the things that they need to be ready. They already have some form of uh, tracking system. They already have some form of advisory. And, and so um, if your organization is, is hesitating about whether you're ready, uh, come talk to the program or come talk to uh, one of the routes. 
about whether or not you're ready. You're, you don't have um, some commitment by engaging and probably um, I think many, many organizations may be further along than they, you know, than they realize that they are today. Um, now that's I, not everybody, but I think that's often true. Go ahead, sorry. I definitely agree with you, Shannon. And um, I do want to, you know, express my openness and enthusiasm to help any um, company, researcher, vendor, bug bounty provider. Um, if you are interested in becoming a CNA, uh, go ahead and reach out and show your interest in the program, in the CVE program. Um, again, it's stuff they already have, but we're just making it public. Um, and it can be as simple or as complicated as you want. And what's great about the CVE program is if you go to cve.org, the list of partners, you can see organizations who you might already um you know, do business with or whose uh, missions align with yours, you can see what their policy looks like. And, um, you know, we encourage that sort of collaboration and, um, you know, uh, teamwork amongst the CNAs as well. Yeah, I think we have a lot to learn from each other and a lot to benefit from each other. I think this isn't a, a space for um, professional and business competition. Like this is a place to um, benefit if, from uh, others who have your, you know, your same experiences or, or similar experiences, right? Um, businesses similar to yours that are already doing advisories. And it's, it's a very open space for uh, sharing about, um, about vulnerabilities and security. And I think people benefit a lot from, um, from the community. And uh, I'm gonna to uh, one of the working groups, the CNA working group uh, has a mentor uh, program, a mentorship program. I'm gonna sort of toot that program, program's horn, I guess, if you will, uh, just to say if uh, it's another resource, if folks are in doubt about their readiness, uh, there is a mentorship program available. Um, Julie, I have one other question I want to ask you, though. Let's say that um, when I when I approach the program and I seem to fit, a, you know, a particular sector or or what have you, is my route necessarily assigned to me, or what if I'm industrial controls but I'm also a Japanese company, or maybe I fit into a different buckets, or, and maybe you know one may be better for me. Do I have a, as an organization, do we have a say in, in which route we would fall under or how does that work? Yes. So a prospective CNA can choose which route they would like to work under. Uh, the CVE program obviously has suggestions based on um, the different routes and their different scopes. Uh, you know, using your example, if it um, a ICS company based in Japan, uh, you know, expressed interest in the program, they filled out the online form. Uh, what happens is MITRE and CISA and the other routes uh, talk about what route may make the most sense. Um, one reason for, uh, for example, being a part of CISA is our, um, you know, we have a portfolio or CNAs under us who are also in that same sector. So we can, uh, we have industry knowledge and familiarity with assigning CVEs that are um, related to your organization. With that being said, there are also lots of benefits to joining as a root under JP cert. A big one being time zones and coordinating vulnerabilities across uh, the globe, and also uh, knowing regional policies and other regional practices that may influence your vulnerability disclosure policy. Or if um, that company partners with JP cert already in another capacity. Those are both pros and cons to um, being uh, under one of the roots. And we all have a good working relationship with each other. We encourage the growth of every route. 
um, to have more CNAs under us because that overall increases coordinated vulnerability disclosure. That's very impressive. That's a great answer. And um, yeah, I, I feel like that gives a lot of a lot of flexibility to to for people to participate. So that's a great response. Um, Julie, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would want to share with people that that I should have asked you? Um, I think there is nothing. No other questions I wish you had asked. I wish I had included um, that the onboarding process is not intimidating to become a CNA. Um, it is less than five hours total. We schedule um, a meeting. We do an hour long onboarding training. We assign the prospective CNA homework so they can practice assigning CVE IDs using um, the new automated JSON 5. And then we pick an announcement. So those steps go by pretty quickly once a CNA has a public vulnerability disclosure policy and a public uh, security advisories page. So it's a small commitment with huge benefit and um, time should not be a barrier to a company coming aboard to the CVE program. We want to make it as accessible and smooth and beneficial for both um, the roots and the partner CNAs as possible. I'm really glad you said that. I think that's excellent um, guidance. Really great. Well, Julie, I would just want to thank you for coming on the program. Uh, every time I talk to you, I really enjoy it and I'm really impressed. Uh, we'd love to have you back on the podcast anytime. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, you know, I speak CVE and I am so happy to be um, a part of the CISA ICS route and to partner with all of the CNAs under us as well as across the CVE program. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you for joining us today on the We Speak CVE podcast, which is available for free on Buzzsprout and the CVE website. If you'd like to participate or suggest a topic, please contact us on the CVE website.